Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is at least go over one last example, um, because obviously the idea of what we're going to be doing today, the idea of what we're going to be doing today is obviously for you guys to get some practice with these, some repetition. So therefore, you can start doing these quicker and quicker and quicker, and they're not as difficult to think through them. So I want to show you one last one that um, is basically the way that I learned how to do them, that you guys can think about using them um, to do you in your head. So first thing, again, that we need to do is make sure we set it equal to 0. So we have 3x squared minus x e or minus 4 equals 0. Okay. Now, hopefully what I want you guys to understand is through your experience, when we're factoring these trinomials, we always had a binomial times a binomial equal to 0. Did everybody agree? Does everybody agree with that? We always had binomials. When we had factored trinomial, we had a binomial times a binomial. Now remember, we need to determine what two numbers multiply to give us 3x. Well, really, in this case, we only have one example, 3x times x, right? Yes? Um, but now, remember the last term. So if you remember doing FOIL, 3x times x gives you 3x squared. So that would be the first, right? And if you guys remember the last, you're going to multiply two numbers that give you negative 4. Well, we have multiple different examples for, number, for this one. You could do 4 and 1. You could do 1 and x4. You could do 3x and 2 and x and 2. I didn't put in the addition or subtraction because that can change. But does everybody agree that my first two terms would give me 3x squared, and my last two terms will at least give me 4? Right? But remember, it's a negative. So one of them has to be positive. One of them has to be negative. So when you're doing, using this method, you're doing a lot of thinking in your head. And you're trying to think ahead, saying, all right, we know that the first terms and the last terms are the same. But which one is positive? Which one is negative? And which one is correct that's going to add to give me a negative x? So what I do is now I look at multiplying my middle terms and my outer terms. Okay, so and again we can play with this. Let's pretend that's positive one, and that's negative one. Crap! And I get oh, I already got the pretty close to right answer. So if I did four times x, that's positive four x. Three times negative one would be a, a negative three x. Four x minus three x is x, right? Yes, that's pretty close. We need to get negative x. So I can easily obtain that answer if I just switch the signs. And guess what? That's my ending factor. Done. Okay. Now, obviously, if you look at this, what if I did this one, plus and negative? And you guys can see why this one doesn't work. 2 times x is 2x. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x. Negative 6x plus 2x is negative 4x. So even if you swap them around, it's not going to work. Even if you swap these around, even if you put a plus and a negative, it doesn't matter. Um, you're not going to get the right answer. All right, so you can start thinking of these through your head, but I think using the methods that the previous methods would work would be the easiest. And now we can go ahead and apply the zero product property to solve the problem. And that'd be it. Okay, so if you guys get comfortable thinking of them, doing them in your head, that's perfect.